Hello, I'm Abby Clausen at Advertising Age, and this is About Digital. This ongoing series of programs reports on the working mechanics of digital marketing. Today, we go behind the scenes with an ad executive from Portland, Oregon. She's achieved national fame as a Twitter personality, and she's now building an agency that offers Twitter marketing services for TV and movie entertainment properties. Twitter.com is a website that serves as the core of one of the world's fastest growing social networks. But it's very different from Facebook or MySpace because it's essentially text messaging meets instant messaging. All of a Twitter user's friends or followers immediately see any new message on the screens of their own computers, cell phones, or other handheld devices. This means that a single Twitter user with 50 followers can instantly communicate with all of them about anything, including the brands, services, and daily entertainments that user is engaged with. And each of those 50 friends can also pass this information onto their own network of followers and so forth. But each of these so-called tweets is limited to 140 characters, and this brevity has fostered new sorts of creativity. In February, backed by the Knight Foundation, the first annual Shorty Awards recognized the top artists in 26 categories of Twitter communications. And winner for the best Twitter advertising campaign was Carrie Bugby, who runs the Big Deal PR agency in Portland, Oregon. Ms. Bugby won for her tweeting in character as Peggy Olson, one of the top characters of the AMC smash hit show Mad Men. Since the fall, she's been interacting with other Twitter users who have also registered various Mad Men character names. This daily Twitter repartee is a direct original extension of the show's own plotline, and her tweets as Peggy Olson quickly amassed a following of more than 12,000 people. It's important to understand that she had no connections to AMC as she did this. I was already a fairly prolific Twitter user, tweeter, and I just saw in my regular tweet stream one day that Don Draper was on Twitter. And I just thought, oh my God, <laughs> why didn't I think of that? I thought this is such a great idea. And so I quickly went to his profile and then probably within 30 seconds just thought, I want to be Peggy Olson. And so ran <laughs> to... Uh, to uh, register her name and was shocked, frankly, that it was available. My driving force in those first couple of months was, this is going to be a kick-ass case study. It's going to be a great white paper. I just want to make it as authentic as possible and treat it like a job because I thought there's not going to be any actionable data if you don't take it seriously. And so I really wanted to gather data. I wanted to gather statistics. I wanted to see what behavior would be like, how people would react to these Mad Men characters on Twitter. I mean, obviously, Mad Men has a huge cult following among ad agency types, and those are also the early adopters of Twitter among them. So it seemed a perfect marriage to me to explore what Twitter could do in that regard. I researched Peggy's backstory. I transcribed all the dialogue from the shows. You know, I would watch it every Sunday night twice, back to back, uh, just to make sure I picked up every nuance. I mean, it really sort of, watching the show wasn't as fun for me because it was more academic at that point, but still really fascinating to dig into the character and really sort of watch, you know, the fantastic writing of Matt Weiner and his team. Before I would tweet, I would always see what are other characters talking about. And sometimes, what are people talking about with regards to Mad Men in general? And in fact, you know, that's a huge part of the research. Every Sunday during the season, I would spend a big chunk of the day, you know, make my latte, sit down with the laptop, spend a big chunk of the day just watching Mad Men conversations on Twitter, because since the show airs on Sunday, that's when people talk about it the most. And then Monday, they talk about it after the fact. And, you know, I would follow people who were talking about Mad Men. Had I known that it would blow up into this thing that it did, I probably would have snapped up a bunch of characters initially. But initially, I just wanted it to be, I just thought it would be and wanted it to be this sort of fun, organic thing. And, uh, but after a couple of er other characters sort of lost interest, they sort of deflated, I just reached out to them and said, hey, if you don't want to do it anymore, I'll take those on for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so that's how I acquired a couple of other characters. Um, whereas some people, uh, Betty Draper <laughs> to be exact, uh, picked up multiple characters right from the beginning so they could create their own little mini conversation arcs, which I think is a fantastic idea. But what did AMC, the network that owns the rights to Mad Men, think of all this? We asked AMC president and general manager, Charlie Collier. We were thrilled to see people actually interacting. And it's amazing how true their voices were at times. You know, you, you'd watch, uh, I think she tweeted under Peggy Olson to begin with. You know, it, uh, it was an amazing experiment, uh, experience to know that it wasn't us, but that she was true to character. As a content creator, if you can go into people's living rooms and, and truly build a relationship with them that they want to carry on in their free time, I think and you asked me what a hit was. I mean, that, that's the definition, another definition of what it takes to have a hit in, you know, in today's world. It's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's actually uh, really satisfying, actually, as a content owner, that people really want to spend their free time you know, uh, taking the experience you've created and, and bringing it to, 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 to new heights. In the wake of the national attention she's received, Ms. Bugby is building a new business. She's pulled together a network of Twitter character players and is offering the group services to entertainment companies via her new ad agency, SupportingCharacters.com. One of the reasons I first started thinking about creating Supporting Characters last fall was because I started seeing a lot of uh, media and entertainment brands on Twitter who were just blowing it. I mean, they clearly had no clue how to use the medium. They're thinking, hey, it's broadcasting. We're just going to throw some tweets out there. They weren't following people, and they still aren't. <laughs> they weren't interacting. They were just picking up RSS feeds or otherwise just sort of pushing information out there. And that's not how Twitter works. At least it's not how it works well. Because I really started paying more attention to it once I started tweeting as a Mad Men character that they still haven't gotten it. Because I'm thinking at this point, it should be a no-brainer. Well, it's obviously not. And so if it isn't, if people aren't getting it, if they, don't, if they aren't picking it up by osmosis, then maybe someone needs to show them. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it could be us. There is ROI related to Twitter, and bloggers know this better than anyone. If you talk to any blogger, once they start tweeting... Um, to a community of people who have similar interests, their traffic for their blog goes way up. I mean, I've done this for clients. Other people do it for their personal blogs. Uh, one of the fantastic things about Twitter is it becomes the most essential news source that you can possibly have because you're connected with people who talk about and care about the same things you do could be issues for moms. They're huge on Twitter, as Motrin discovered. Um, could be issues for people in politics. Could be people are talking about fishing. Could be knitting. I mean, it can be anything. But people think that it's just a bunch of banal, blah, 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 I'm having a sandwich. There is that. But I think that's starting to fall by the wayside as people figure out it's really a fantastic way to connect with people who have like interests. So I follow lots of people who are really immersed in social media on my own personal Twitter feed. I have another one that's sort of that's all about jazz. And so I actually set up different Twitter accounts to follow different kinds of conversations because it's a way to consolidate those conversations. So if you just want to tune in and find out, hey, what are people talking about today with regards to jazz? I go to Jazz Crowd. That's one of the Twitter accounts I have set up. If I want to hear about social media, I go to at Carrie Bugby and tune into that crowd. And so it's really a fantastic way to fine tune your interests. And which is, you can easily see, I would hope any marketer could see, how you can also harness that same kind of methodology for your brand. And that's it for this About Digital report. Watch for the next one. And thanks for being with us. I'm Abby Clausen at Advertising Age in New York.